The attached nameplate provides valuable data regarding the Votator 2 cylinder assembly that can help with obtaining the correct SPX flow parts. The serial number for the cylinder enables the SPX flow representative to gain access to the bill of materials so that the appropriate parts are identified and ordered correctly. Servicing your Votator will require the tools displayed here. It is important to use only genuine SPX flow parts when maintaining this equipment, which has been engineered for precise fit and purpose. Utilizing off-spec components could potentially damage the unit and cause unnecessary downtime. Please refer to the operation manual for further details. Remove the two-piece drive and shaft guard over the mutator shaft by removing the four small bolts and nuts and lifting the cover from the top and bottom of the pedestal space. Upon disconnecting the flexible hoses, which include the warm water inlet and outlet connections from the rotary joint, remove the rotary joint by placing an open end wrench on the flat shoulder and loosen from the shaft lock nut by turning clockwise. Slide the rotary joint and the shaft heater pipe assembly from the mutator shaft. Tap the plastic lock nut safety cover with a rubber mallet at the 12 o'clock position to disengage it from the stainless steel bearing retainer. Loosen the bolt nut and washer from the sanitary hinged clamp and remove. Next, remove the safety cover bearing retainer from the non-driven head. Remove the shaft lock nut, which has left-hand threads, by utilizing the shaft lock nut wrench and mallet. Engage the shaft lock nut wrench, which is part number 79-2, onto the shaft lock nut, and wrap the end of the wrench once or twice to loosen. Cup your hand at the bottom of the shaft lock nut as the nut is being removed to avoid dropping and damaging the fine left-hand threads. When the rotary joint is utilized, the heater pipe support should be removed. Insert your index finger into the open end of the non-drive end of the mutator shaft and slide the heater pipe support from the shaft. Loosen the wing acorn nut to allow the V2 locking latch to swing clockwise to the 2 o'clock position. Wedge a rag between the V2 locking latch and stainless steel front cover to temporarily position the latch. Next, rotate the non-drive end head in a clockwise direction until the mating lugs are disengaged. Insert the head removal tool, or HRT, through the bearing and into the threaded end of the mutator shaft. Slide the non-driven end head along the length of the HRT until the stationary seal face is past the end of the mutator shaft. Grasp the end of the HRT with the non-drive end head and remove it from the mutator shaft. Carry it to a table or other stable work surface for further maintenance. Please exercise caution during this procedure as failing to use the head removal tool can result in damage to the seal face. Use of the tool prevents chipping the stationary seal face on the end of the shaft during removal or replacement of the head. Loosen the bolts, nuts, and washers from the two-piece sanitary clamp and remove. Next, remove the safety cover bearing retainer from the non-driven extra heavy-duty head. Remove the shaft lock nut, which has left-hand threads, by utilizing the shaft lock nut wrench and mallet. Engage the shaft lock nut wrench onto the shaft lock nut and wrap the end of the wrench once or twice to loosen. Cup your hand at the bottom of the shaft lock nut as the nut is being removed to avoid dropping and damaging the fine left-hand threads. Loosen the wing nut to allow the V2 locking latch to swing clockwise to a 2 o'clock position. Wedge a rag between the V2 locking latch and stainless steel front cover to temporarily position the latch. Next, rotate the non-drive end extra heavy-duty head in a clockwise direction until the mating lugs are disengaged. Insert the head removal tool through the bearing and into the threaded end of the mutator shaft. Then, slide the non-driven end extra heavy-duty head along the length of the tool until the stationary seal face is past the end of the mutator shaft. 
grasp the end of the tool along with the head and remove the tool from the mutator shaft. Carry it to a table or other stable work surface for further maintenance if needed. Please exercise caution during this procedure, as failing to use the head removal tool can result in damage to the seal face. Use of the tool prevents chipping the stationary seal face on the end of the shaft during removal or replacement of the head. Insert the plastic shaft skid into the unit by first installing it at the top 12 o'clock position. Rotate the shaft skid clockwise while lifting slightly on the mutator shaft and position the shaft skid at 6 o'clock location. This ensures the tube is protected from scratching and chipping of the smooth tube surface. Remove the shaft and skid together from the cylinder assembly and place them on a table or cradle. This activity should include two persons based on the weight of the mutator shaft. Failing to use the plastic shaft skid in the procedure can result in scratching, scoring, or chipping of the inner wall surface of the product tube during removal or replacement of the mutator shaft. To order genuine replacement parts or tools, contact your authorized SPX Flow sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com/wcb for more information.